Hi, welcome to our Pharma Topics channel. Welcome to the 14th series of uh, clinical research and pharmacovigilance. In this, uh, we are going to see about uh, passive surveillance, active surveillance, and vaccine safety surveillance. Passive surveillance. Passive surveillance is one of the primary methods used in pharmacovigilance to monitor and collect information about the ADRs and other safety related issues associated with the pharmaceutical products. It involves the voluntary reporting of uh, suspected adverse events by healthcare professionals, patients, caregivers, and sometimes pharmaceutical companies. Voluntary reporting. In a passive surveillance system, the individuals, uh, the primary healthcare professionals, are encouraged to report any ADRs they suspect may be related to the medication. These adverse events uh, could include unexpected uh, side effects, allergic reactions, medication errors and any other unintended and harmful effects. Healthcare professionals role. Healthcare professionals including the doctors, nurses, pharmacists and dentists play a critical role in identifying and reporting the adverse events. They have a direct interaction with the patients and are more likely to observe and recognize unusual or unexpected reactions to the medications. Patient involvement. Patient, passive surveillance also encourages the patients, caregivers and consumers to report the adverse events that they experience or observe. Patients can provide valuable insights into their own health experiences, help, helping to identify rare or unexpected reactions. Pharmaceutical industry reporting. In some cases, the pharmaceutical companies are required to report the AEs. They become aware of uh, through their uh, market internal safety monitoring process. Reporting forms and systems. Many countries and regions uh, provide the reporting forms or online platforms for submitting adverse event reports. These forms uh, typically ask for information about the patient, the suspected medication, the adverse event and any other relevant medical history. Strengths of passive surveillance. Widespread reach. Passive surveillance allows for a broader scope of data collection as it involves voluntary reporting from a diverse range of sources. Early signal detection. While passive surveillance uh, may not capture all the adverse events, it can identify the potential safety signals that warrant further investigation. Low resource intensity. Passive surveillance does not require intensive resources for data collection making it cost effective approach let us see the limitations of passive surveillance under reporting one of the main challenges of passive surveillance is under reporting as many adverse events may go unreported due to the factors like lack of awareness uncertainty about the causality or the time constraints lack of denominator data passive surveillance systems often lack the accurate data on the total number of people exposed to a particular medication making it difficult to calculate the true frequency of the adverse events then causality assessment passive surveillance reports may not always provide the sufficient information to definitely establish a causal relationship between the medication and the reported adverse event let us see what is active surveillance active surveillance is a proactive method used in pharmacovigilance to systematically monitor and collect information about the ADRs and other safety related issues associated with the pharmaceutical products. Unlike passive surveillance which relies on voluntary reporting, active surveillance uh, involves actively seeking out and collecting data from specific sources or through specific methods. First is systematic data collection. Active surveillance involves the systematic collection of data from predetermined sources or through targeted methods. This can include conducting surveys, utilizing the electronic healthcare records, employing data mining techniques, and conducting cohort studies. Targeted populations. Active surveillance often focuses on specific populations, patient groups, or geographic areas of interest. For example, it can be used to monitor the safety of a newly approved medication in real world setting, or to track the safety of medications in a vulnerable patient population. Electronic health records, health databases, electronic health records, 
and claim uh, and claims databases uh, can be valuable sources of data for active surveillance these records provide a wealth of information about the patient demographics medical history prescribed medications and reported adverse events data mining and signal detection active surveillance may involve sophisticated data mining techniques to identify the potential safety signals from larger databases this process involves analyzing patterns and trends to detect unusual or unexpected associations between the <coughs> medications and the adverse events cohort studies in cohort studies a specific group of patients who have been exposed to a particular medication is followed over a time to monitor their health outcomes this approach allows the researchers to assess the incidence of adverse events and compare it to a control group that has not been exposed to the medication pharmaco epidemiology studies pharmaco epidemiology studies examine the relationship between the drug use and the health outcomes in large populations these studies aim to identify and quantify risk associated with the medications and provide valuable insights into the drug safety strengths of active surveillance one is targeted information active surveillance allows the researchers to focus on specific populations medications or outcomes of interest more comprehensive data than the passive surveillance active surveillance methods can often provide more comprehensive and accurate data compared to the passive reporting as they involve systematic data collection the timely detection of signals active surveillance methods can facilitate the early detection of potential safety concerns by actively analyzing the data for patterns and trends limitations of active surveillance resource intensity active surveillance methods can be resource intensive requiring data collection analysis and interpretation selection bias cohort studies and other active surveillance approaches can sometimes be subject to selection bias as the population being studied may not be representative of the general population then limited to available data active surveillance methods rely on the availability of relevant uh, data sources which may not always capture all the relevant information in pharmaco vigilance active surveillance complements passive surveillance by providing a more proactive and targeted approach to monitoring drug safety both approaches are essential for detecting and managing the potential safety issues associated with these with the medications let us see what is vaccine safety surveillance vaccine safety surveillance is a systematic process of monitoring and assessing the safety of vaccines once they are introduced into the population it involves collection analysis and evaluation of data to identify and investigate the potential adverse events or safety concerns associated with the vaccines vaccine safety surveillance plays a critical role in ensuring that the vaccines remain safe and effective tools for, for preventing the diseases first is pre market evaluation before a vaccine is approved for use it undergoes a rigorous pre market testing through clinical trials to assess its safety and efficacy this phase involves testing the vaccine in controlled settings to identify the potential adrs and establish safety profiles then post market surveillance once the vaccine is licensed and begins to be administered to the general population or the ongoing monitoring for aes continues through post marketing surveillance then passive surveillance similar to pharmaco vigilance passive surveillance uh, involves voluntary reporting of the aes by healthcare professionals patients caregivers and sometimes pharmaceutical companies reporting systems are established to collect the data on any aes that occur after vaccination active surveillance active surveillance methods uh, such as uh, systematic review of uh, medical records electronic health records data mining are employed to actively identify and assess the potential safety signals these methods help to detect the aes that may not be reported through passive surveillance vaccine adverse event reporting system that is paers many countries have established a vaccine adverse event reporting systems where healthcare providers patients and parents can report any aes that they suspect uh, may be associated with the vaccines 
these reports are monitored and analyzed for potential safety concerns signal detection and assessment safety signals are potential uh, links between the vaccine and the ae signals are identified through analysis of uh, reported aes and data mining techniques once a signal is detected further investigation is conducted to determine the causality then causality assessment determine whether an ae is causally linked to the vaccine is a complex process causality assessment involves evaluating factors such as timing of the event after vaccination the biological plausibility of the association and whether similar events occur in the unvaccinated individuals risk communication effective communication is a crucial component of vaccine safety surveillance health authorities communicate with the healthcare professionals and the public to provide information about the known risks address the concerns and ensure informed decision making global collaboration vaccine safety surveillance often involves uh, international collaboration through organizations like uh, world health organization and other various regulatory agencies information is shared across the countries to identify global trends and address emerging safety concerns continuous monitoring and feedback vaccine safety surveillance is an ongoing process feedback loops are established uh, to continuously update the safety information refine the assessment methodologies and enhance the surveillance systems vaccine safety surveillance aims to strike a balance between ensuring the safety of vaccines and benefits they provide in preventing the diseases by actively monitoring the vaccine safety uh, healthcare authorities can promptly identify and address potential safety concerns to maintain public confidence in immunization programs so it's a very short information of passive surveillance active surveillance and vaccine safety surveillance i hope it will be useful for you thank you for listening happy learning kindly share this to more of your friends kindly subscribe to our pharma topics channel if you like this video kindly press the like button kindly go through all the series of videos which is available in the clinical research and pharmacovigilance uh, playlist in the pharma topics channel thank you